Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new series where we're covering how to make a 2D game in Unreal Engine. So here we are, we're going to be creating a top-down RPG-like game, like an old Zelda-style type game, uh, or Stardew Valley type, that sort of style. And we'll be going through how to create that in Unreal Engine 5.3. So in this first episode, we're going to start looking at tile maps and tile sets, and then how to build levels and add collision to your tile maps. So let's take a look. So to get started with our 2D game, we're going to start working on our tile sets. So a tile set is a texture that you bring in, and I'll give you some examples here, of a texture that looks something like this, where you've got a grid of various sprites all laid out for you. Hopefully all evenly spaced and in rows and columns just like this one is um, But you want a texture like this You see I've brought in a few I've got quite a few here I can use and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a tile set of this So you just right click on the one you want to use go to sprite actions and go create tile set That will create an asset called here planes tile set. I'm just going to drag that into the other folder So it is here Okay, so when you open it up, this the purpose of this is to sort of set up what the tile set properties are. So you can see the full tile set in this tile set view here, and you can see a single tile editor. If I click on the individual one, it will show me a single tile. Now, by default, the tile size is going to give you is 32 by 32. Now, I know this texture here is 16 by 16 because that's where the source told me it was. Um, and also, I can tell from by clicking on this, there's four in here, so which it means there's half the size so i'm going to change that to 16 by 16 and we can see here now that's looking a lot better with our tiles there so what else we've got down here we've got additional textures this is where you place things like normal maps if you want one on top of your 2d uh, images you want um very unlikely that you ever use that though um then border margin per tile spacing and drawing offset is all to handle uh the spacing of the grid tiles if they're not all flush like it is here so for example turt pass spacing here is like for the night one you'll see it spaces it across there 10 moves it along a bit more like that now one thing you'll notice when you're using these textures you'll notice that they come in a bit blurry yeah and it's not obviously what we want we want nice sharp pixels not this anti-aliased stuff so that is actually handled on the texture so if you go to the tile sheet texture and open it up and over here, you're going to look for, um, where is it? The, texture group here and look at 2d pixels unfiltered Click on that. And you'll see it's now a lot more like harsh, less anti alias, like less like blurred um and it'll make it a bit nicer there okay um so we're gonna hit save there go back to our tile set and we're gonna see things are a little bit better for us here okay cool so another thing that this is useful for is for adding collision on it <clears throat> now collision is determined on the tile set and you determine the shape of the collision by clicking on individual tiles so let's say for example i want to make this bit here have collision on it okay which probably would want to do anyway so what we do is i'm gonna select this tile here go up top you see add box add polygon or add circle you can also create it inside of here too by using shift and click to add um uh vertices uh but you probably need to add a shape first probably there you go and then yeah you add a vertices to it so you can customize the shape of it if you want um, but you want to just basically set up the collision box for this. Now, most of the time, a box would suffice, but you may be finding occasions where you want to add a different shape or change it to a circle for whatever reason. But in our case, we want to use a box for all of these, really. So I'm going to leave it like that. And I'm going to go add box. Add box. Ooh, add box. And if I go up top here and turn on to colliding tiles, it will highlight the collision ones. So these are now all the collidable tiles I have. Okay, you see how it's set up the collision for them, like so. Okay, and that just turns it off and on so you can see what's going on here. 
So I'm going to save that and I can now close that. So that's the tile set. Next we want to do is use this tile set to create a map. So we're going to right click on this and we're going to create a tile map. And this is where you build your level. So let's say we'll do this one as level forest. <clears throat> and in here, this is where you paint your map. So over here, we've got a few options to deal with. We've got layers and various different settings for the, the size of the um, whole map itself. On the left, you've got your chosen tile set that you're currently using. And the best way to think about it is like it's like a palette of colors you want to use if you're painting. It's just you've got tiles instead. So the layer system works just like any other layer system you've used in any other software. If you add layers, the ones on top will be rendered on top, the ones below won't be rendered uh, below. So let's start off with basic background on our tile here. Now at the moment, my tile is quite small, yeah? So my map width is set to four by four. I'm gonna change that to be 32 by 32, okay? So now it's a bit bigger. Now I want to select a tile. As you can see, if I don't got one selected, it won't let me paste anything. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, this green one in the middle and I'm going to drag and just paint that across like this. Okay, and I can paint out the shape I want to use. And if I wanted to, I can hold down shift like this and I can make a stencil that I can drag around. So once you've done a bit of the same size like this, it makes it a bit easier. Just paint out the shape. Okay. And then we can say it's my floor or my background layer. Okay. Um, so that's got a layer on it. And we can see here it's got layer collides. So that means the collision that's been assigned to this, which it does have collision, this because uh, I've made everything in this little box here have collision. Um, we'll have some sort of collision on it. The Collision settings though, is we can change over here the collision thickness override. So I can override the thickness of our collision and I can tick it and change the value to whatever I want to be. So imagine if it's a 3D shape, it'll put a 50 by 50 square on that shape. Okay, so it basically extrudes it by 50, which is important if you're doing things like walking up on top of things, you want to make sure it's tall enough and not um, being obstructed by that sort of stuff. So when we add this onto it, we're going to make it so that will stop our movement on it. But yeah, so you can do collision overrides on here. You can also offset the overrides as well, like the actual position of it if you want. But that'll do for now. Um, next, we're going to go down. We've got tile width, tile done, uh, pixels put on your unit one by one. That's all fine. You've got materials, we'll leave that alone. And the rest of this is mostly useless. We want to keep this as it is, okay? So that's one layer, but let's say I want to add another layer to it. Let's say I want to add these walls to it. I'm going to go up to my layers here, and we're going to create a new layer. Here it is. And I can, you can rename them. So you just right click, rename, and this will be my um, walls, for example. And in here, I can select a shape. So I can do a whole shape like this, and I can now paste that in there. Yeah, and if I wanted to, oh, I can paste that in there, and you can see it overrides the previous layer, but it doesn't override the bottom layer because that's technically on a different layer, so therefore it doesn't cause any issues. I can just paste that along there, no problem. Okay. We've also got these ones here too, that do internal corners, so I can drag that out there like that. Click there. Oop. And do some something funky like this. And then color it in the rest. And I'll just, if you want to move, pan it around by the way, it's right click, you hold down right click and you do this. Um, as you can see also, you've got an eraser and a fill. So if you want to fill it with something you can do too. Um, well, we're just going to have it like this. Okay, there we go. So there is our simple 
uh, layers set up, okay? This one is going to be layers collide, but I'm going to actually make this one a lot taller. I'm going to go to collision override thickness override and change that to 100. So that should be plenty tall enough to not cause any concerns. And then hit save and we can now close that. So how to actually use the, this tile map? Well, we're going to drag it out into our level like this. And there it is. And if I lift it up, we can see it's there. And if I were to lay this on the floor, like this, and then push play. Even though we're in 3D character, you'll notice there is still collision on it. So I step up on it. And so that's fifth. It's gone up by 50 because that's what the, we said the floor was. But these ones should be blocking me. Maybe they're just not high enough. Maybe make it higher. Um, so we're going to edit the time map. And I'm going to change the bottom layer actually to have uh, no collision on it. We'll turn off collision override on that. And we'll say walls here will change to be. 200. I think it goes in the middle as well. So it would be like if you put 100, it'd be 50 at either side, which might be the issue that we're seeing there. So there you go. I can't walk through these walls now. They're, they're stuck like that. And this thing can be scaled up just like any other object in the game. And positioned around like so and I've got collision now obviously we're not going to keep our 3d character we'll be swapping them out for a 2d character in time but this is the basics of how we set up our tile map and we can add other tile maps to this uh add to it sorry with different tile sets if I open up my draw again go to my textures go to my decor I'm going to right click on this and create a tile set for this and drag that back into the parent folder and there it is and this one you can define again the size of these this will have no collision on it so I'm going to set up any collision shapes on this close that and then in this tile set for this map here we're going to go up to active tile set, click on the little square icon next to it. And I can choose any other tile set I have in my game. So I click on my decor one and now I can paint this one on. Uh, oh, I forgot to turn on and change the texture to a 2D texture. 2D pixels, save. That's better. Uh, yeah, so now I can paint on here where I want things to go. So I'm going to add some grass details. I can add some grass details like this. Oh, they've made the colour ground a different colour. That's weird. I haven't done that. Oh, it's because I've used that as a floor, not that as a floor. Okay, I see what I've done. That's fine. We can easily fix that. So on the grass here, I'm just going to um, create a tile set of the grass. And put that into my parent. Move there. And in here, this is simply just one texture and tile. So it's probably 16 by 16. Uh, let's make sure that's right. Yep, 16 by 16. Um, change it to 2D. It doesn't really matter because it's just all green anyway, but that'll do. Uh, yeah, that'll do there. If I go back to my forest level now, and I'm going to fill my layer one here with the actual grass I want to use. So I'm going to click on here, choose a grass tile set, fill that. Oh, I have the wrong thing used. Hold on. It's probably because I have the other one set as well. There we go. I think I've accepted that was a problem. Um, yeah, so we can patch these holes here. If I go and put that on the right one, go to walls, click there, just pick that in there. And yeah, so now I can go to my decor 
and layer one. You can, you can even use different layers, especially for things like this rock here. So if I would paint this rock in, for example, it would cut a hole in it because it's not overlaying it. So you need to make another layer for this. And usually it's a good idea to put decor in a different layer. So do decor. <clears throat> and now I can paint it on there. It doesn't cause any issues. Um, but yeah, that's all you do. You just kind of paint in your stuff. Wherever you want it to go. Put some flowers in. Put the rocks. And you decorate your level however you see fit. Okay. And there you go. And that's the basics of that. So as I said, it's pretty basic. We've just got our 3D character running around it. But what we're going to do in the next part is we're going to now swap out our 3D character for a 2D character and start to talk a bit about Paper ZD and talking about that plugin and how that works and how it can really benefit your 2D games development. So there you go. We've now make our own tile maps and tile sets to build our levels. Uh, but as I said, it kind of looks weird with having a 3D character running around it. So we need to swap that over to a 2D one. So the next part, we're going to start looking at how to create a 2D character and putting in those sprites, as well as how to use the Paper ZD plugin. If you haven't got this plugin, I strongly recommend it if you are using it to make 2D games. Uh, it just has a lot of features that you really wish the base engine would have, and it's free to download from the marketplace. So help yourself to it. It's really, really good. So we're checking it out next time. If you want to watch that video right now, head over to patreon.com forward slash Ryan Lady, where you can donate and support the channel and get access to all the videos early, as well as many other benefits. Thank you so much for everyone who is donating over there and also those who are subscribed to YouTube members. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.